Uh, what's happening? I don't know. Unless, uh, tomorrow's newspaper. Do you still have it? Yeah. Local accountant beaten, left for dead. Local accountant Arthur McFly was severely beaten and left for dead on the steps of the Hill Valley Courthouse last night. They're gonna kill my grandpa? Tannen's goons, no doubt. Probably in retaliation for Arthur answering that subpoena you delivered. What are we gonna do? I'm not sure what we can do. According to this, your grandfather was dumped on the doorsteps of the courthouse five minutes ago. My dad's picture is disappearing. That's the time stream catching up with your grandfather's fatal wounds. Which means your father will never be born, and neither will you, unless... <laughs> when did you last see your grandfather? Uh, four o'clock, in the town square. Let's give him enough time to make his deposition. Right. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. That shouldn't be a problem in your case. I mean, you were in jail. All right, let's get moving before the police find us. Freeze! Ah. Step out of the car with your hands up. What was that? What was what? Crap! I heard something back there. I think you're mistaken, officer. Well, looks like I caught me a fugitive. Carl Sagan, the speakeasy arsonist. A legend speakeasy arsonist, if you don't mind. What the heck kind of buggy is that? Stay back! It's a prototype, still untested, liable to blow up at any moment. Or suddenly take off without warning! That's so. There it is again. I think the night air is playing tricks on you, officer. What is it, some kind of foreign job? A German or something? Not at all. This is solid American workmanship. Now I'm sure something's back there. Looks like something out of Buck Rogers. A year from now, everybody will be driving these babies. Huh. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a promotion in this. You're getting to be a valuable commodity in Hill Valley. That's very gratifying to hear. I hope you don't mind cooling off a few minutes till reinforcements get here. I don't mind, but the car may have other ideas. What was that? What was what? Crap! I heard something back there. I think you're mistaken, officer. I'd like to get a closer look at that getaway car. What's that? Off in those bushes. Huh? I didn't hear anything. I thought it was my henchman returning, but you're probably right. It was nothing. Henchman, you say? Hmm. There it is again. I think the night air is playing tricks on you, officer. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Hmm. Hey! Stop! Stop! No! Save your grandfather! I'll be fine until you get back! You got it, Doc. What was that?
455. Artie's gotta be in there somewhere, spilling his guts to the DA. There he is. All I gotta do is get to him before... Mr. Crockett! I was wondering if I could do a little follow-up interview with you about the plight of poor Mr. Sagan. My sources indicate that Judge Brown will be setting him free tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on that. What's that? Nothing. Listen, can we talk later? I've really got to get to the courthouse right now. Really? Why? My grandpa, he needs me as a character witness to get a fishing license. Oh, well then, carry on. And do put that vicious dog of yours on a leash, will you? We have laws about that sort of thing, you know. Sure, no problem. Ah! Oh, come on, yesterday, Marty. Stop talking. Get moving. Einstein? Einstein, what is it, boy? Stay, boy! Crap! Einstein! Is it a squirrel, Liney? What are you up to, Liney? Gotta make it past Emmett and into the courthouse. Want the stick, boy? Want to chase it? Is it a squirrel, Liney? You want to play? Okay, let's play. Go get it, boy. Where are you going, boy? You're killing me, Heine. Okay, let's try this again. Come on, boy, heal. We gotta save Doc. Go on, boy. Einstein! Bad dog! Oh, come on, Einie! This isn't funny, Einstein. I haven't got time for this, Einie. Go get her, Einie. You! Oh, get this mangy animal away from me! Come on, Einstein. Get away from the nice lady. My shoes! Einstein, no! Way to go, Einie. Now, to get into that courthouse and grab Artie before Tannen's guys. Ah! Ah! Hey! Oh, God. Um, hey! According to my calculations, the rotary engine for a full-scale rocket drill requires 1.21 kilowatts of power. Can you check over my work to make sure? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. But I need to get to Arthur. Why? He might be headed for an accident. Arthur McFly may not be the most coordinated fellow around, but I'm sure he can walk up a flight of stairs. Come on. Shouldn't we be getting on with our work? We're on a strict deadline, right? Sure. 
Sure. You start without me. Turn around and start walking, and I'll... I'll catch up to you in just a few minutes. Huh? Oh, hell. Oh, my God! What the hell is that? What's what? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, I mean before, while I was walking towards you. I wasn't talking to anyone. I was working on equations for my rocket drill. No, I mean after. Uh, never mind. Let's get going. Follow me. I thought I'd never leave. At least now I have a clear shot to the courthouse. You gotta come with me. Look, you're in a lot of danger. What do you mean I'm in danger? No time to explain, Grand... Artie. Just promise me you'll stay at the police station until... Artie McFly. Just the guy we're looking for. Hey, fellas. Run! Get him! Artie? Uh, I better pick up their trail before I start fading out again. Clear. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. Buddy, how's my favorite accountant doing? Oh, I've been better. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, McFly. Trixie, take a powder, doll. We got business to discuss. K.O., you boys play nice now. Mwah. Nice to see you again, Artie. You too, Miss Trotter. Yeah, yeah, we're all happy as clams. Now scram. <sighs> Are you guys stupid? What are you thinking? Bringing this fish food to my doorstep. We just thought that was your first mistake. Thinking. Look at me. Do you ever catch me thinking? Huh? Uh... Don't answer that. Look, just drag him inside, find out what he told the DA, then get rid of him. I think we can handle that. Good. Now, if you don't mind, I've got an arsonist to snuff out. And will one of you slobs start hauling these crates in? We're on it, kid. So far, so good. Ha! Huh. I, I better get in there quick. Contents. One winged goddess. Oops. What do you want? I'm here to inspect your place for rats. No, you ain't. Scram. So much for the direct approach.
contents. One winged goddess. Winged goddess? Locked. Hmm. Nice fit. Here goes nothing. The crease cue ball. Stir the soup cue ball. Clean out the blood stains cue ball. Shit. I'm not a gangster, I'm a freaking butler. Now which one of you guys goes in first? Jeez, for a gal with no arms, you sure is heavy! <laughs> Whoops. Ow! Do you mind? I'm trying to conduct a professional interrogation over here. Where should I put this? Just shove it behind the bar. I'll just shove you behind the bar. Mm. Come on, Artie. Jeez, how much chloroform did you put on that rag anyway? What? Because I'm having a hard time bringing Sleeping Beauty here around. Uh, uh, Let me see. Uh, hey, Artie! We got a few questions about you and the DA. DA, Day, D, E, D? You see what I'm working with here? Seems to be catching. Say, wake up! Oh, sorry, boss. The stupid cold's got me wiped out. <coughs> well, try to stay awake long enough to finish that poster, will ya? We got a club to open in a few days. And turn off that sign, would ya? <coughs> Wake up, sleepyhead. I wonder Artie's so out of it. I hope the Sisters of Mercy approve of our redecorate. <laughs> I'll get caught for sure if I try that again. L Kid. I'll never get to that switch while Picasso's in my way. This is gonna be the swellest speakeasy in Hill Valley. It's gonna be the only speakeasy in Hill Valley. Oh, right. Funny how the competitions. Oh, uh, hey guys. I don't feel so. Say, wake up, you lazy bum. Must have been the cold. Cold my eye. He's been dipping into the inventory. The inventory. One more on down, two to go. Come on, Artie, wake up. You're sleeping your life away. Litter. Ow! Nye, nye. What the? I think we blew a fuse. Well, go up to the soup kitchen and get a new one. Why me? You'd rather hang around and talk to this guy, huh? Three days are here again. Yeah, I'll just get that fuse. Wake up, sleepyhead. He's too far away.
Trixie Trotter, world-famous chanteuse. I never heard of her. Come on, Artie. Hey! Get me out of here! Keep your shirt on! I'm not sure I can promise that, madam. Wow, not bad. What? Wake up, sleepyhead. L kid. Again? Must have been a faulty fuse. Well, go get one that ain't so faulty. You know, some people know how to say please every now and then. Wake up, sleepyhead. Come on, Artie, wake up. You're sleeping your life away. Literally. Hey! Get me out of here! Wake up, sleepyhead. Okay, this is getting freaking ridiculous. Freaking ridiculous! I'll open a fresh box of fuses. Yeah, you do that. Come on, Artie, wake up. You're sleeping your life away. Literally. Trying my patience, Artie. Come on, Artie, wake up. McDermott's Canadian whiskey. Nah. I don't think so. Come on, Artie, wake up. You're sleeping your life away. Literally. Hey! Hey! 
What was that? Must be some wiring problems with the emergency button. I hope the Sisters of Mercy approve of our re Matches! Got knocked out. I hope the Sisters of Mercy approve of our redecorating. A hundred and twenty proof. Whoa. Bam! Right in the kisser. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, you! Wait, do I know you? Not for about 40 years. Is anyone Whoa. down there? Everything's spinning! Come on, Artie. Let's get out of here before these jerks get a chance to kill you. Wait a minute. They were gonna kill me? <sighs> Great. This isn't funny, guys. Perfect timing. Hang on, Grandpa. We've got a pickup to make. I thought you'd never ask. Ah, what's he doing here? It's a long story. Oh, son of a... And then I carried Artie to the DeLorean. He came back to get you. That's me. So we can go home now, right? Not yet. We still have this loose end to tie up. No, don't tie me up again. He's coming around. Please be careful. You won't be safe in Hill Valley as long as Kit Tannen remains at large. Don't worry, I'm going far away from Hill Valley, and I'm never coming back. No! no. He's got to hook up with Grandma. What's her name? Uh, it's Sylvia. You know a woman named Sylvia? No. Well, she knows you. We'll know you. It's vitally important that you two meet. Oh, I get it. You want me to be part of some undercover sting operation. No, possibly. Yeah. Are you G-Man? Uh-huh. Something like that. Sure. Anything for Uncle Sam. I'll stay nearby and wait for this Sylvia. But in the meantime, I'll lay low. Good man. When can I expect to see you? That was a close call. You think it'll be okay? You're not fading out, are you? Besides, Arthur will be completely out of danger come August 25th. August 25th? That's the date Kid Tannen is finally put behind bars. How's that picture of your dad? Still there. Good. Let's get out of here before we accidentally elect Hoover to a second term.
Everything looks okay. Are you sure? See, McFly residence. So, want to come in? Maybe hang out a while? I want my dad to see for himself that you're still around. I'd love to, Marty, but... You've got to go. I understand, Doc. You've got a life to lead, kids to raise and all that. No, I've got to go to the bank and stop that estate sale you told me about. Oh. Oh! You go find your pop. I'll be back within the hour. See you soon, Doc. All right. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. What's going on, Dad? Did you change the locks or something? Marty? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in! This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Mom, it's Marty, Mom. Open up. It sounds like Marty, but it must be a trick. Mom! Go away. Shame on you. How can I convince you? Tell me something only Marty would know. Ah. I've got a scar on my left knee. From what? Skateboarding down the courthouse steps when I was 12. That's right. Oh my lord, what are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid locks. Marty! Oh my god, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff! I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? Eh, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. What the hell did you do to my dad? Your dad's been in that wheelchair since before you were born, butthead. And you better hope he has a spare, cause you're gonna need one in like three seconds. Better leave before my dad calls the cops. The cops? We own the cops! The Tannen Gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. No way. You don't believe me? Ben, no! Bang! Ha ha! Check it out. To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. It's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California. Ooh. Tell me. <laughs> Why can't you pick on somebody else? We do. We pick on lots of guys. It's kind of our thing. Okay, but where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Ooh. Here's what I still don't understand. How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> 
Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family? The Tannen family never lets him forget about it. I got a question. <laughs> what are you guys doing here anyway? It's that time of the month. Time for Georgie to pay up. We usually take the payment in cash, but this month we can take it out of your hide. Ooh. Hey! And another thing. Huh. Look, can't we bury the hatchet already? Even better idea. I bury this nine iron up your backside. Here's what I still don't understand. What about my mom? I mean, how did she end up with my dad? Beats us. Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. And another thing. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back, so the kid gloves can come off. One more question. Biff, what happened to you? When I left here, you were kind of afraid of my dad. Afraid? <laughs> <laughs> no Tannen ain't never been afraid of no McFly. Ooh. Okay, tell me no this. No more questions. Ooh. I was wondering. Don't. And another thing. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back. The thing with the manure truck. Which one? I was wondering. Don't. Oh. I was wondering. Don't. I was wondering. Don't. Okay, tell me no this. No more questions. Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley matches with the Tannen family! Dad! Marty, get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding! Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez. Grab the arcade. We've got to go back to the day Kid Tannen was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannins. Not an option, Doc. Punch it.
Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kit Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, the singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. We need to go back into Tannen's speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, well to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Sonny. Sonny? Mr. Crockett, what are you doing in that getup? It's just... My new look. I'm trying to prove that you can dress like a gangster without being a gangster. You know? How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment! You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Annie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right, now where's that speakeasy? Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Who is the King of Siam? Joe Piscopo? Take a hike, squirt. Who told you about this place? Place to call to my travel agent. 
What's the big idea? Uh, stitch in time saves nine. <sighs> Settle down, mister. Why don't you wait outside and take a nap? Napkin, please. I've made a mess. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? The old gray mare? Who told you to come here? Hieronymus Bosch? What will you do if I let you inside? Radio for help? Who told you to come here? Hieronymus Bosch? What will you do when I send you away? Read a book? Who told you to come here? Hieronymus Bosch? What will you do tomorrow? Row my boat? Where are you going? Inglewood. Welcome to L Kid, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L-Kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am plucky. So jolly and carefree. Hey, I know you. You're. Parker. Osford, Danny, Danny Parker, Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? You look my failure. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. Should you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy... Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Whoopee! Yeah, here. now, about we those troubles. Uh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? 
So about those troubles. Troubles? Ha! I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want a party! Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? You in? Why not? Let's go for odds. Eight rats. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Those troubles. Troubles? Ha! <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want a party! In the meantime, in between time, we got See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Hey, back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. and clean. 
dear. Don't make it fortissimo, make it pianissimo, whisper in my ear. I don't care. Somehow it's the lyrics to her song. those troubles it all started on uh, uh, June 14th I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this uh, this car straight out of Buck Rogers popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road no then later I, I lost track of a witness the poor schlub hasn't been heard from since that wasn't your fault and then to top it off I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. And not one, but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me. <laughs> Cause she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty, as in Jennifer's grandma Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty'll ever be. You know, drinking that much is really bad for your health. What are you, my mother? More like future grandson-in-law. What? Never mind. You've got a secret? What is it? I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen. Yes? I like you. <laughs> You're my new best friend. <laughs> See you later, Danny. I'll be here. down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here. Excuse me, are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. I really like your voice. Thanks. You should hear me when I ain't so under the weather. You're sick? Oh yeah, sore throat. That's why I'm giving Q-Ball so many extended solos tonight. I kind of wondered about that. Hey, your songs seem to have a big effect on Officer Parker over there. I am humbled and gratified that my musical gifts have fallen upon such receptive ears. Do you know Sister Christian? I don't do religious tunes. 
How about Stairway to Heaven? I sing popular songs, kiddo. You want hymns? Go to a church. You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Take it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Uh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey, Toots. Any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? You were telling me what a great guy Kid is. Yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know you don't break up with a creep like Kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets. But I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now, but Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Hey, if I arrange a meeting with Artie, could you use that insurance of yours? Use it? Heck, if what I'm sitting on pans out, I could send that bozo all the way to the big house. I'll see what I can do. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where are you from? The name's, uh, Sonny Crockett. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on. What's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fides. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't. Even. Blink. It's not a real gun, it's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti, see? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Sonny Crockett here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> hey, Artie. He's back.
honey, you're just in time. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, we're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! Oh, get him out of here! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Hey, Doc, how's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed, eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost the nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Any sign of Artie? Haven't spotted him yet. Doc, Parker's in worse shape than we thought. We've screwed up his life so bad he's been dumped by Jennifer's future grandmother. Ah! I know. Marty, it's more important than ever that you get Officer Parker back on his destined path. If Jennifer never exists, then I'll never take you to 2015 to save your kids. Then old Biff will never- Paradox City, got it. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Why are Tannins always such jerks anyway? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I travel back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kid Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. 
But Arthur McFly was served with a subpoena. And shot by Kid Tanner's goons. Yes. So you jump back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kit Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes! Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into tan and speakeasy to listen to her. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Sonny. But once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einy stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. Hey, 
Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. Take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute. Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Sonny. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Could Arthur be in there? That's way too dark and crowded for me to tell. Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? I can't tell her that. It could get him in trouble. What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called laboratory. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and intellectual foundations with every tool in my vocabulary. So you're not dating? Dating? The mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. Good. What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Crockett. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Officer Parker reformed. He has? Really? Uh, soon. Just you wait. Hmm. What's Kid Tannen been up to for the last two months? Didn't you hear? It was in all the papers. I've been, uh, traveling. Well, the feds were all set to arrest Tannen on tax evasion charges. Seems they'd gotten Tannen's books from his accountant. I heard something about that, yeah. Well, the accountant disappeared, unsurprisingly. But the feds still thought they had a case. After all, they still had the books, right? Right. Wrong. The day before the trial, the books up and vanished right out of the court's evidence locker. No. Lots of fingers were pointed, but honestly, the whole town's so corrupt that it could have been anyone. Court clerks, cops, janitors. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? 
Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know safety. what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. <gasps> Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey boy, take a whiff of this. Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good. Better go tell Doc about Artie and Trixie. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Trixie? Yeah? 
I found Arthur. He's staying at the Majestic Arms. That flea bag? He's too classy for that. Yeah, well, anyway, you want to pop over there right now and talk to him about this evidence you got. I can't take more than a five-minute break. Get him to come here. I'm not sure he'd find this place inviting. Then I guess he might say we're stuck at an impasse. Hey, you can trust me. Come on, what's the dirt you got on Kid? Nix on that. I ain't spilling nothing till I talk with Arthur Mc... Oh, F-L-Y. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Danny. You! See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Danny. You! So about that secret. Look, buddy, I like you, but I'm just not in the mood to be spilling secrets right now. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Kid, I'm trying to entertain some people here. What is this feeling that has me in its grip? What has me on the edge and curling my lips? Worse in the blues or the front page news? It's rage. I'm overflowing. I've asked my doctor and psychiatrist too. They tell me that there's not a thing I can do. There's no consoling and there's no controlling this rage. Danny, I'm you. Overflowing with rage. So about that secret. I'm not telling you Daytime, nothing. Daytime, nighttime, many time at all. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Summertime, wintertime, spring or fall, it's rage. That's got me steaming. Volcanoes blow the tops and tidal waves crest. But there's a force in nature worse than the rest. There's something that I've got to get off my chest. It's rage. I'm overflowing with rage. I'm like a villain on a stage or a lion in a cage full of rage. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. You see, I'm sort of independent. I am my own superintendent. My star is on Danny. the ascendant. You. That's why I don't care. So about that secret. I Look, buddy, I like you, but I'm just not in the mood to be spilling what secrets right now. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Say I am plucky, so jolly and carefree. I don't care, I don't care. If I do get the mean and stony stare. If I'm never successful, it won't be distressful. Cause I don't... Come to me, my melancholy bear. Fancy, maybe you know, dear, that I Danny, love with you. Every so, about that secret, I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen, 
Yes. I like you. You're my new best friend. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. While I kiss away each tear. Or else I shall be melancholy too. Danny, you! So about that secret. Oh yeah, my secret. Well, you're my pal. Well, I can tell you, but don't let it get out. I've been working for Tannen for over a month now. What? It's true. All I gotta do is look the other way. While evidence is getting destroyed, or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line, and Tannen. Make sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope. Great deal, huh? There's nobody near. More with the No, not a great deal. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? Just whisper. What about Artie McFly? Hasn't he been missing for two months? That's true, and all signs point to a tannin job. Oh god, I've made a horrible mistake! I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back! But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> Come on, Danny, pull yourself together. It's not so bad. Not so bad. I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> Hang in there, Danny. Oh, God. I don't care. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Take it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks.
Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talk me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to- Come up for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Had a girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you? I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella. I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What happened in the alley with Arthur? I don't want to talk about it. What about your insurance policy? There ain't no insurance policy. After tonight, I'm tossing it in the furnace and burning it up. Come on, Trixie, can't you tell me what happened out there? No! Then at least give me the evidence you got on Kid. No, I made a deal with myself. As soon as tonight's set is over, the evidence goes up in smoke. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Party? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? 
None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial like with my Trixie! Oh no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Junior and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Things are getting worse, Doc. In order to keep Artie safe, Trixie's gonna destroy her evidence against Tannen. You have to stop her! How? The only thing that would make her turn on Kid now is if she welched on the deal and killed my grandfather. Well, you can't let that happen. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Hey, Kid. What is it, Squirt? Where do you think McFly ran off to? I don't know, and I don't care. Trixie really begged for Artie's life? Yeah, that's what I get for letting him tutorate her. She's gone soft on the little bug. That's a nice place you got here. Ain't it? I picked out all the statuary myself when I was traveling through Greece. I can tell. It's got that tan and touch. Thanks. See ya, kid. Yeah, whatever. Hey, bartender. What'll it be? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? 
<clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the wall of honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it? A, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, bub. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on when all this goes away. Think you can do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. Got any tips for getting Parker in the right frame of mind? Well, I ain't no Carl Jung, but uh, I've noticed that when he's boozing it up like he is tonight, Danny Boy's particularly receptive to the lyrical stylings of Miss Trotter. Huh? Yeah, some guys are inspired by great works of art, others get their ideas from lounge singers. Go figure. Do you know what happened to Trixie out there? She seems pretty freaked out. You talk weird, you know that? But no, I don't know nothing about Trixie's emotional state. Kid doesn't pay me nearly enough to pour drinks and babysit his crazy girlfriends. So is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh yeah, right, sorry. Wrong guy. I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Pets. Uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. Who are you working on now? Boris Karloff. What do you think? Not bad. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Voila! Nice job. Now, go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. I don't think anyone will be interested in this caricature until it's hanging on the wall of Kid's Club. Hey! What? Talk to you later. Hey look! A paying customer!
The shrew. Didn't burrow deep enough. Checkerboard Charlie. Removed from the board. I guess someone jumped him. Hmm, looks like someone's about to be added to Tannen's Wall of Fame. Poor bastard. Hmm, looks like someone's about to be added to Tannen's Wall of Fame. Poor bastard. What's that Wall of Fame all about? That, my tiny friend, is where I pay tribute to fallen foes. Cut short in the prime of life before I had a chance to cut it short myself. They're the guys you've whacked. Whacked? Uh, rubbed out. Not in any legally actionable sense, no. Whacked. <laughs> I like that. See ya, kid. Yeah, whatever. I don't think anyone will be interested in this caricature until it's hanging on the wall of Kid's Club. I don't think they'd be interested in my caricature. Sorry about this, Dad. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I talked to Kid. Oh? He told me about Artie. Oh. It was awesome of you to plead for his life. And it was uh, awesome of Kid to spare it. So you see why I gotta get rid of all the dirt I got on Kid. As long as he's loyal to me, I gotta stay loyal to him. I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Artie! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Artie was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died, Artie was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history... Accounting, and I made a big discovery while I was copying all of Kid's books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Kid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book! Hey, Copper! He's not interested. Figures. Half the police force is in Tannen's pocket. Give me a few minutes to work on him. I've got a hunch he'll come around. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again.
I don't care. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, man, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here. Sorry, lady. I didn't mean to get your boyfriend kicked out of the club. Oh, water under the bridge. You want to keep his seat warm? Uh, thanks anyway. Danny. You! Hang in there, Danny. Oh, God. Edna! What? What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. Of goals that you could name, reclaiming your good name is what you ought to do. You should care, you should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue, for you should care. Catchy. You really think so? Yeah, it's, uh... Got a good hook to it. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Donate to the clock tower fund. What's wrong with the clock tower? It's not broken, is it? Not in the slightest. Ooh. It's just painfully drab. 
I'm raising funds to commission a sculptor to place a couple of handsome ornamental statues on either side of the clock face. Something to inspire the citizens to do their civic duty. Something like lions? Or gargoyles. You can't beat a good gargoyle. Edna! What? Do you think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics? I've, uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure! Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Hey, thanks. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Welcome back, sir. Looks like Parker's still parked. Hey, Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. You should care. Much better song for her. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? You know what you'd sing great? This one song by... Take it up with the piano player. He does the set list. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. She's right. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop, and yeah, I've had a few bad breaks, possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car, but I'm a good man. Yeah, and all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was, and let the chips fall where they may. All right. Hey, Miss Trotter, uh, you wanted to speak with me? What happened to my louse of an ex-boyfriend? I don't know. Rats. I told the chief we need a team of bloodhounds like they got over in Placerville. Yeah, but in the meantime... All right, everyone. Party's over. Everyone out of the speakeasy. Speakeasy? You're mistaken, officer. This is an ice cream parlor. <laughs> nice try, you. Out! Would the Valenti mob be willing to help, uh, defuse this little situation? Sure, no problem. I'll bring it up in the next, uh, company meeting. Hey, we ain't begging here. Kid just thought JJ might like a piece of the action. Especially now that he's just caught the speakeasy arsonist. Wait, you mean... Doc? Doc? You ain't with the Valenti gang at all, are you? What do you know about the arsonist? Come on, you. Off to the station house. Kid's gonna get you, rat. He's gonna get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. 
Thanks to Miss Trotter's evidence, the entire Hill Valley Police Force is out looking for Kid and his goons. You don't understand. We've got to find him now. He's captured a friend of mine. Who? Uh, never mind. Don't worry. We've got the entire town square sealed off. If Tannen's within a mile of here, we'll find him eventually. Uh, I don't think we have time for eventually. It's locked. Parker must have confiscated this hooch from the speakeasy. Ew. Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. There's only a few people, and maybe an animal or two, who'd be interested in Grandpa's smelly old pipe. But this isn't one of them. Maybe not. Not sure what that'll do. Hey boy, how you doing? Good dog. Hoover 28, a chicken in every pot. How's that working out, Herbie? Hey, Danny. Sorry, pal. Can't talk right now. I've got a report to write up for the chief. Nice ride. Hey, did anyone sweep the alley for clues yet? Nice ride. Uber 28, a chicken in every pot.
Irving Kid Tannen. Guess he dropped this on his way out. It's empty. Figures. Hey, Einie, get your nose over here. All right. I really don't think Tannen and Doc are with Herbert Hoover, Einie. Okay, okay, I'll check it out. A button. All right, Doc, here I come. Rocket, what are you doing here? Uh, never mind. Come here and help me get rid of this stinking arsonist. Edna? I caught her planting dynamite while he was clearing out the soup kitchen. Guess Sagan was innocent after all. I was researching a story, you ignoramus! Tell it to St. Peter's sister. Hey, what's all this? Parker? Tannen, you're under arrest. Get him, Sacramento boy. I can't do that, kid. What? Oh, I get it. Why don't you let go of Miss Strickland and call it a night? Hey, look over there! Watch out! Give it up, Tannen. The alley's blocked off and so are the roads out of town. It's over. Over? Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over! Make it easy on yourself, Tan. Hey, kid! Eat lead, phony! Hey, moron! More on this! Yo, Tannen! Make like a tree and die, rat! No one messes with Kid Tannen! What should I do? Do you have a gun? Not a real one. Beats me! He's not about to let me in. Come on, kid. You know how this'll end. Yeah, with me dancing on your grave! You want your flashback, Tannen? Come and get it! Are you shooting at me? Are you shooting at me? not about to let me in. I could do- Make it easy on yourself, Tannen. Tannen. He's not about to let me in. Yo, Tannen. Make like a tree and die, rat. No one messes with Kid T- 
cannon! Bowling for ten. Come on, kid. You know how this'll end. Yeah, with me dancing on your grave! A trail of explosive booze leading right into the garage. Hey, kid, lead, phony! Are you shooting at me? I... You shooting at me? It's empty, so what's the point? What should I do? Beats me! He's not about to let me in. Make it easy on yourself. Tannin? Tannins never make things easy! A trail of explosive booze leading right into the garage. He's not about to let me in. No one messes with Kid Tannen. I can't get to the car from here. Come on, kid. You... Are you shooting at me? Are you shooting at me, kid? Lead, phony. Moron! More on this! Yo, Tannin! Make like a tree and die, rat! <laughs> hey! That a girl. Yo, Tannin! Make like a tree and die, rat! Make it easy on yourself, Tannen. So... I'm afraid I'm finding it difficult to concentrate with all the bullets flying around my head, Mr. Crockett. Right! A trail of explosive booze leading right into the garage. Hey, moron! More on this! No one messes with Kid Tannen! Hey, moron! More on this! So... I'm afraid I'm finding it difficult to concentrate with all the bullets flying around my head, Mr. Crockett. Right! Come on, kid. You know how this... To end. Irving, kid, Tannen. Jeez, did kid ever clean this thing? It smells like armpits and booze. Are you shooting at me? Hey, kid. <laughs> that ain't a real gun. Oh, right. I forgot.
I'd better just get rid of it then. Oh crap. <coughs> hey, he's getting away! Oh no. Yes. No. There. Good as new. Oh, look, Tannen. The judge's son. All right, Parker. I want a getaway car and a clear road to Nevada, or the brown kid gets it. Doc. Are you? Doc? Yes, it's me. I'm talking to you through the radio apparatus my younger self has installed in the rocket car. What's going on up there? It's not good, Doc. Trixie and Parker did their part, but now Kid's holding you hostage. Right, Scott. No kidding. Try to get Kid in the car. Once he's inside, give me a signal, and I'll do the rest. How am I? You! Emmett! You're the cause of all of this, ain't you? Should've known. I mean, Sonny Crockett? Yeah, well, what kind of gangster's named Irving? No one makes a fool out of me, you backstabbing twerp! Guess I'm no one. Hey! Doc, hit it! The hell? Irving Tannen, I'm placing you under arrest for kidnapping, attempted murder, tax evasion, and smelling like a piece of crap. Tax evasion? Haven't you heard? The feds are practically drooling over Trixie's books. Trixie? That's what you get for killing Artie, you bastard! What? I didn't... Trixie? Artie? All right, Grandpa. My poor car. I believe I owe you an apology, Mr. Brown. Thanks to your ridiculous contraption, Hill Valley's most notorious criminal is finally headed to prison. No apologies necessary, Miss Strickland. My rocket car may have accidentally saved the day, but only because it's a completely out-of-control failure. I need a new idea. If you're willing to listen, I might have a few suggestions. But first, I think we should take in a movie. I'm all yours, Mr. Brown. I think you'll like it. It's all about a brilliant scientist with an overabundance of hubris. Whew. Come on, Einie. Let's go find Doc. <gasps> Thanks for letting me fly the DeLorean, Doc. This thing's a blast. Are you absolutely sure that everything's back to normal? Totally. Kid's going to jail, Emmett's going to see Frankenstein, and there's no such thing as a tanning crime family in 1986. <laughs> and we remembered Einstein this time, too. Hill Valley crime rate at all time low. Hmm. Well, except for Grandpa necking with Trixie, I think we're ready to go back to 1986. Do you feel yourself fading out of existence? No. Then as long as your father's still born in seven years, I say, let your grandfather sow his oats. Sowing oats? Is that what's going on with you and Edna? What are you talking about? Emmett and Edna. They're gonna go see Frankenstein together. That's... odd. Great Scott! 
What? We've got to get back in. Oh, this could be disastrous. Ah. Where'd you go, Doc? Uh -huh. God.